Let's see if Trent Young can finish it off. Take a clean sweep. Great to have the FW1 Aussie Racing Car Super Series at the Emerald Gold Coast 600. Away they go, and the pole man has got a pretty good jump down to turn one. He does as a second run that's battling now, and then, oh, this is not looking good. A slow start from one car, some contact there, four wide. And look for Jack Perkins, he's in that red number two, the brand new Holden Cruise that is trying to get his way through. He's got to pass 30 or so cars to get to the front here. But it's Trent Young, the pole man, who leads. Kyle Clues next, then Josh Hunt, who is driving the other Erebus car this weekend, former Gold Coast resident that now lives in Melbourne, spent some time in the States in the Atlantic Series in about a couple of years. This is on board with Jack Perkins trying to carve his way through. At the end of the back chicane there, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a brave move to go through here. Luckily, these cars, they've uh, been a bit smaller. They can do side by side in a couple corners that we can in the V8. So this is definitely going to be good racing. We can fit these things five wide. Hang on a minute. There's one stopped in the chicane. Now it gets running again. And that's Peter Carr, who's one of the, the regular front runners in this series, who's actually taken a few poles and done a fair bit of winning this year. He was on the podium, I believe, in race one. Top three, though. They're gone. Absolutely cleared away. Massive margin back. This doesn't happen very often. I swear it's a lot closer than this usually. <laughs> well, this is a close battle for the top three. A little bit of brake lock there from the third place car. A few corners ago into turn 11. Trying to get a run off the last turn down the front straight here. Just listen to those things scream. They must be loud from inside the car. <laughs> they make plenty of grunt, these little Yamaha motorcycle power cars. Look at Josh Hunt. He's gone from third to the lead. He's grabbed the slipstream off both cars, but when you pull out, it's like being on the oval. There's Absolutely. No and look There's at no that. Run. Everybody all squirrely on the brakes. He pulls it off third to first and one straight away. Not a bad run at all. And now covers because he knows that the angry pack, Kyle Clue, is closing right on in. So give me the tape. Let's have a look at this restart. Couple of cars slow away in the background. Have a look for one to, yeah, a little bit of a rub there. But they managed to get away with it and push on. Certainly not as dramatic as the start we saw. Oh! oh that was dramatic. That was certainly dramatic. You see Carby and spun around there. And that was Peter Carr. We, we're trying to figure out how he got to where he got to, but that's how he got there. He rejoins way back. He's 23rd in the order. These three getting stuck into it, but Simon Smith's actually closing in to make it a four-way fight now. Give us your take, mate. What are you going to do this afternoon? Are you going to start that Fujitsu Go Daddy car, or what are you going to do? Well, unfortunately, qualifying didn't quite go the way we hoped. We, uh, Michael got caught up by every single red flag there was. I, I was saying, I think we should just remove the wing mirrors from the V8 cars for qualifying, because it seems like they cause more harm than good. So we'll have to talk strategy, I think, but these guys' the strategy is just flat out. <laughs> this is absolutely great racing. No strategy here. Just keep pulling gears and nailing that throttle. A little bit of an onboard mirror check there. The battle for the lead rages on. Josh Hunt back into the point. He's been improving all weekend. Was just outside the top five, race one. Just off the podium, race two. Oh, you be careful of these curbs. These little cars, they don't like curbs at all. Well, you saw the damage done to that oh. one car to the back. She came to the first lap there. I can't believe how much they move under the brakes as well. Things are sliding all over the place. Lots of rear locking. That's a problem here for sure. They're like go-karts on steroids because they are absolute rockets behind. The chasing pack are working together. Jack Perkins, we touched on him before, he started 30th. After two laps, he's 16th and slicing his way up through the order. But they are one of the popular support categories to the V8 Supercars Championship. We'll see them a little later in the year at Winton to round out their 2012 season. But they're actually building a whole new pile of cars to really push the market in the next 12 months with this series. It's been moved from Sydney to Queensland during the season with the change in ownership, but it's really, really popular. And there is no such thing as a bad Aussie racing car race. This stuff, the formula, is absolutely on the money. And it's crazy to think they're trying to push the market. They've already got 30 entries this week. I don't know how many more you'd want to put on track. I guess with a smaller size, you could fit more on a racetrack than you can, but still, this is, uh, this is great racing, absolutely. Can we do a Canadian sub-series? I think we should. Yeah. I think it'd be silly not to. We could even hold a couple rounds in the winter, throw some studded tires on, and go do some ice racing. This is a perfect ice racing car. Well, we are businessmen from way back, aren't we, really? There you go. Have a look at these guys. We though. missed our calling here. <laughs> <laughs> Love that shot. It is, the it is just so tight up front. Nobody's got any room to breathe. Passing attempts. Trent Young falling down to third now. Fourth car joining the battle. 
a bit further back. Morris Massini's trying to catch up and go with him. If anything, he's actually closing side by side to the chicane. You, get, you need to yield here. You need to back off. You need to let the other guy go. That's what they do. It's given Josh Hunt. The biggest lead we've seen in this race, all three car lengths. That, that's as good as it'll get, too. Again, snaking around in the brakes a little bit. They clearly punch a big hole in the air because the draft is big, but look at that. Ooh, big damage to the number not, 17. That's not the hole that you should be punching. Gus Robbins missing the front body work and will have to retire from this one, but fight at the front is really, really tight. Adrian Cottrell is actually the reigning Aussie race car champ, but he pulled out of the series halfway through the year, so the number one's up for grabs at the end of 2012. It's been fought among the likes of Clues and Young. A lot of these guys who have been in these cars for quite some years, so they know exactly how to extract the maximum performance from them. This is on board with Jack Perkins. Uh-oh. And that was no help there. That was all on his own. Just some of that rear locking we were talking about. Rear tires on the brakes, lock up, engine stalls, things slide into the corner. Very easy to lose it that way. He's rejoined, but... He's slipping back down the or he's back to 17th. Let's check in with Tom Williams. Up here in the hospitality lounge with Megan Nay, two times gold medalist in the Commonwealth Games. Megan, this is your very first V8 Supercars event. Yeah, it's my first time uh, up here and actually to the Gold Coast for the 600. So it's really exciting and I'm looking forward to um, seeing the main race this afternoon. And it's just so loud and crazy and everything's going on, but I love it. What a, what a starting point to watch yesterday's event for you. Right, you caught a doozy. Yeah, it was crazy. We were right here, you know, for the start of the two crashes, actually. So to start, that was my first race, you know, live. So that was... You know, it gave me a few goosebumps, but um, it was, yeah, it was exciting times. Nice one, Megan. Enjoyed today. Thank you so much. Great race still going on. Tommy, though, in Aussie racing cars. Josh Hunt hanging on. Kyle Clues keen to get by, but the driver's door is flapping on cart number 18. This time by five laps in the books. Plenty of Aussie racing cars action on the Gold Coast. When we come back in just a sec. Gold Coast with the Aussie racing cars. Not the best cars when you've got big curbs and chicanes, but these guys will have a crack at them. And Josh Hunt has been leading the way and not afraid to throw that Erebus machine off the big chicane and come crashing down. There's been a bit going on though, James Hitchcliffe, while we were in the break. This was down at the hairpin. This was getting a little willy. They got away with that one though. This was also a little interesting. A little bit of a touch here. And wait for the bodywork. It's coming up. It's coming up. There it is. You don't like anything impeding your vision, especially not part of your own car. <laughs> That's usually not a good sign. But this is the fight at the front. It's turned into a five-way fight. Josh Hunt still leads the way. Did not I say that? That's not the first time he has gone completely sideways <laughs> into turn four. He somehow recovers it every time. He lost the lead briefly during the break when he got a little bit too much curb in the back chicane they're coming up to you now, but regained it. Definitely a little bit of a straight line advantage in that car, but you can see Trent Young all over him trying to complete the hat trick here this weekend. Oh, and this is where Hunt's been pushing hard in the middle part of the beach chicane, and it compromises his exit run down here, but Young's got to worry. He's got to have eyes in the back of his head because Clues is closing in in that blue car. It's running with some backing from the Clipsal 500, of course. That's where we start 2013 for the V8 supercars, but he's got a problem too. That right door keeps opening. Yeah, that, I mean, that is what it is. Not a whole lot the driver can do about that at this point. It's just key to try and not let it distract you too much. No problems like that in an Indy car. No, our doors normally stay uh, stay firmly planted. You've got to be pretty happy with, with the year in the GoDaddy car for Andretti Autosport. I know Ryan Hunter Ray ended up sealing the championship, but you qualified in the front row of the Indy 500. You ran on the podium there a few times. You're a contender this year, mate. You've, you're right up there. We're getting there. We're getting there. No, it was, it was a solid year, and... Uh, Another problem, the, the bonnet coming up in front of the driver. That's not, another one we don't get in IndyCar a lot. But no, it was a uh, solid year. Obviously, super proud of the whole team and, and what Ryan accomplished and taking home the title. And you know, for me, only my second year in the series, we uh, had some good results. But we know uh, we know we can do better, and that's the goal for next year: is to come back even stronger, hit the ground running, and, and see if it can be sort of Ryan and I 
going into the final race, battling for the championship. Have you checked your calendar for October next year and where it meets up with the Gold Coast 600? There's no plan. I know, say, I was very excited to see that the uh, the dates had fallen just so. So yeah, hopefully I'll be back out here. Depends how I go this afternoon, if I get invited back or not, we'll see. I might have to be here as a spectator. I'm sure we'll find you a ride in something, maybe an Aussie racing car, because it looks pretty spicy at the front. Josh Hunt still leads with Young, Clue, Smith, Morris Mussini's just in the background. Oh, right in front of the leaders. There's a lap car gone around. Clues has hit him. Ruth Bowler's just gone around. Clues has hit that car as well. And definitely damage to the left front. You can see completely bent out of shape. Oh, wrong Terrible. place, wrong time, unlucky. The leaders just squeezed through. Yeah, Josh Hunt barely missed him there. And that's Scott Taylor's car that was down the escape road a few laps earlier that we just saw. So Hunt made it through, Young made it through. And that's just broken up the lead pack completely. Now it's sort of down to a two-man race. And two laps to do it in, too. So, big gap back to Smith. Let's have a look again. They come around this corner. It's blind. They don't know what's there. There's a car. Ah, same drama that Marco Andretti had yesterday when he came across Peter Cox in the tire wall. Very, very similar indeed. It's just one of those things where Clues was, was almost trying to set up Young into turn 12, was a little bit inside of his car, and just that couple inches is all it took for the damage to come. But look, we saw the front straight. There was probably a five or six car length gap between the front two, and it's now down to nil. Trent Young really pushing. He wants that third one. He wants to sweep this one out. And Messini's up to third. Smith fourth, then Travis Edwards. Jake Forake next, Grant Lugby, Darren Chamberlain, Darren Massini. The top 10 ran that by Nathan Townsend. So Peter Carr's worked his way back up to 12th. Jack Perkins is 15th in that new Holden Cruise. But yeah, it's mono and mono. It's one on one in terms of this race, the third and final race for the weekend. Third and fourth's not decided though. Smith has a little bit of a look. Well, it's more than a little bit. He's definitely, he's definitely wanting to get that position back. Lost it a few laps ago. And this time by will be one to go. Not done with yet. Young is all over the back of Josh Hunt. And Young's had four race wins this season, two of them coming this weekend. So he could double his season tally in one weekend. He's had a very good run on the Gold Coast. Now he's got to get in the toe here. His question, his question is, though, do you want to lead on the last lap? Well, I think his best bet's actually into turn four here. Josh has been very loose on the brakes, as we can see, a little more aggressive on the curbs. We've seen him a couple times back it into turn four. If he just leaves the door open a little bit, he doesn't. He keeps it nice and tight, does not give Trent any room to look down the inside. And I think with a straight line advantage, it's going to be very tough. All he's got to do is sort of get through this back chicane without any dramas and not allow Young to make a move into turn 11. He's closing in, he's in the toe, but there's nowhere to go here. It narrows up on the entry to the beach chicane. Hunt's been aggressive in the first part of the chicane, cocks himself here, but he rode the curve pretty well there. Lap traffic up in front here, which way do you go? They've made it past one. There's another one to get through here. Oh, you don't want to catch a lap car right here where it's twisty. Does he know that they're there? Yep. He goes for it. And this is it, only two corners left. It's gonna be very hard for Trent Young now to make the move. He might have to settle for two firsts and a second. Or use the bumper. Or oh. use the bumper, do the bump and run. Oh, oh. He's the gap, he's not gonna get the drive. A paper's width between the two on that one. He, I, I think he thought about it. He thought maybe he could get him just a little loose off the corner, but we've seen the straight line speed from Josh Hunt. He drove a very, I won't say controlled race, but <laughs> he certainly did what he needed to do to stay in front and he takes the win and he gets home to win by oh, just 0.16 of a second. You know, that's a pretty standard Aussie racing car margin. It sounds like a big one, actually, by the sound of it. Messini third, Smith fourth, and again, a great Aussie racing car race to round out the weekend for these guys. Grant Ludby seventh, Peter Carr got his way back up the order and got to eighth. Darren Chamberlain rounds out the top nine, and Brendan Pingle is in position 10. The Aussie racing cars are done. V8 Utes not too far away.